silver eyes, scientific name Zosterops lateralis, are very small omnivorous birds of Australia and the southwest Pacific. Around 12 centimetres long and weighing in at 10 grams, their most distinctive feature is the ring of pure white feathers around the eye. The species was scientifically described way back in 1801 by the English ornithologist John Latham, who named some of Australia's iconic birds, including the emu, sulphur-crested cockatoo, wedge-tailed eagle, magpie and superb lyrebird. He's sometimes called the grandfather of Australian ornithology. Silver eyes are native to Australia, New Zealand, Lord Howe Island, New Caledonia, the Loyalty Islands, Vanuatu and Fiji. They've managed to colonise the Pacific Islands more or less by accident. Migrating along the coast of eastern Australia, they've regularly been blown out to sea on westerly winds, and the very lucky have reached islands an astounding distance from Australia. They've made landfall at tiny Lord Howe Island, around 580 kilometres away, New Caledonia, just shy of 1,400 kilometres distant, and New Zealand, where they were first recorded in 1832, with more arriving in 1856, a non-stop flight of around 2,000 kilometres. Silver eyes breed in spring and early summer. Their nest is a tiny cup of grass, moss, hair, spider web, and soft plant fibre, suspended from a fork in dense foliage. They're extraordinarily efficient breeders, laying two to four pale blue eggs that hatch after 11 days. The young fledge after just 10 days and are independent at three weeks and able to breed after nine months. A pair can raise two and sometimes three broods each breeding season. And they can be amazingly long lived with records of wild birds at least 11 years old. In late summer, after breeding, silver eyes gather in flocks and many of the eastern Australian population migrate, travelling north along the coast and ranges. They feed on insects, fruit, particularly small fruits, and nectar. During the day they forage on the move, calling to each other and moving quickly through shrubbery. Sometimes they're even seen foraging on the ground. Then they cover long distances during the night. Most of the Tasmanian population crosses Bass Strait and disperses into Victoria, New South Wales and South East Queensland, while the populations of these areas tend to head further north. The far north Queensland silver eyes are resident all year round. At the end of their northern excursion, all the migrating birds drift southward to their summer haunts, with most of the Tasmanian population back home by August. At the end of the migration cycle, some of the Tasmanians will have flown over 4,000 kilometres. So how do these tiny travellers find their way? Research has shown they navigate partly by reading the Earth's magnetic field and that they take bearings from the rising and setting sun by detecting polarised light. Those navigational abilities are instinctive, hardwired. But there's a learned component too because the same individual birds turn up in the same locations year after year using landmarks to return to reliable sources of food and water. Because the species is so widespread and so many of its populations are isolated by distance and have only occasional genetic input from outside, there's something like 17 subspecies, or if you prefer geographical races, of silver eye, all capable of interbreeding successfully when their ranges overlap. For example, the bird on the left here is from the resident subspecies, that inhabits southeast New South Wales and eastern Victoria, and the bird on the right is from the Tasmanian subspecies, easily distinguished by its richly coloured buff flanks and grey throat. The two subspecies are travelling in a mixed flock, 
but the Tasmanian birds will press on across Bass Strait to their summer breeding grounds. If you want to help silver eyes, plant native plants in your garden, especially berry bearing plants and native shrubs that provide dense cover. Like all long distance travellers they really appreciate a drink and a bath, but make sure your bird bath is always topped up. This one is rigged using an inexpensive battery operated hose timer to refill three times a week. If you enjoyed this, hit the red subscribe button and then the bell icon and you'll be notified of new Werong Lane videos. And at the end, there's live links to a couple of my other Australian Wildlife Mini Docos.